positive, warm, fuzzy feelings after today's session? We were expecting to see a reef rally after that Greece boat went through, but it does look like the relief rally has started a little bit early. Of course, our market performance, a very strong one, up by 1.2%, really driven by offshore movements. We saw a strong lead from Wall Street, which was up by 1.3%, and it seemed to be on the back of news that German banks will follow French banks in rolling over Greek debt to uh, longer maturities. All up, if we have a look at this uh, solution, if it does come to play, then it would be good news for those banks involved, but perhaps bad news for the IMF EU, which may still need to bail out Greece time and time again. But all in all, a fantastic performance by the Australian share market. We saw all sectors trading higher, with the exception of the property as well as telecom space. In fact, Telstra was down by 0.7%, and it has had a pretty bad run since breaking that key support level of $2.99 last week. But the energy sector, the best performing, not surprising given that we have seen oil prices rebounding strongly overnight. In fact, up by 2.5%, back up to levels before that announcement that we will see the International Energy Agency releasing uh, the, those reserves of oil. So all in all, mm. a great day for the Aussie share market. And Julia, just in terms of the, the technical enthusiasts out there, for the last few weeks we've been talking about that 44.51 level, of course the, the low for 2011. Michael now mentioning uh, 45.60 as the, the level to, to break the downward trend. Do we start now looking to that level more than uh, the downside? We have been talking about this for a number of weeks now and what we want to see is a break of the downtrend before uh, the correction in the Australian market is over but the signs are very positive. It does look like key sectors are now turning and so that does bode well for the Aussie share market. In fact last week it really started with the Shanghai Composite and if we have a look at China's market this is what it looks like. The correction in China has been quite deep since the peak in April we've seen the market losing 15 percent but you can see that last week Shanghai broke that down trend line that's seen as a positive for our market not only that if you have a look at key stocks on the Aussie share market stocks like BHP Billiton this is BHP and its uh, correction from that August uh, April peak has been 17 percent but you can see that today we broke that downtrend line the material sector looking like it's on the brink of breaking that downtrend line the banks have broken the downtrend line and I guess what we're really waiting for is a stronger turnaround in the energy sector if I bring up the energy sector it's one area which has been beaten very severely. In fact, since the peak that we saw in April, the energy sector is down a massive 27%. So if we do see a sustained rise in oil prices, it, prices, it does bode well for the Aussie share market. 4,560 4, uh, points is where we're looking first. And then usually when we see a bounce back from such a severe correction, we do expect to see a retracement of about 50%. And that would mean that the first target for the Aussie share market, if we do see a bounce back, would be 4,714 points. The LNG export is doing pretty well. Uh, how much of that's tied to Japan, obviously needing some sort of an alternative fuel supply? It's a huge part of that. And if we have a look at LNG exports coming in for uh, May to Japan, we saw a rise of 71%. So that's because we have seen about a quarter of the nuclear energy in Japan offline. So they have to, they've gone to find alternative sources of energy. So we have seen oil, uh, oil as well as LNG, the big winners. And I guess if we have a look at the two biggest LNG exporters here in Australia, it's Woodside Petroleum and BHP Billiton. Woodside Petroleum, it doesn't have a huge uh, ex excess capacity. So I guess a big winner here is BHP Billiton. But it's also a big win for those big projects yet to come online. And that's because this gap in energy requirements from Japan is expected to continue for the next two or three years. We saw another energy company, Kyushu, coming out to the market today, today to say that it is going to buy uh, more oil and LNG uh, to make up for uh, the, the, the gap that we're seeing in the energy market in uh, Japan. So that demand coming from the utility space is expected to be great news for, like, for our LNG projects. It's good news for the likes of Woodside Petroleum in uh, building Pluto, uh, Santos, Oil Search, as well as Origin Energy. So altogether, uh, great news for those LNG companies, but unfortunately not reflected in the share price of these companies mm. in the last three months. Things that have been doing well today. What did you make of the performance of uh, Macquarie? group look it was down around one and a half percent at, at one stage during the trading session actually hitting a fresh uh, two-year low bounce back a little bit to end up in positive territory but uh, concerns about a potential profit downgrade 
Look, we've already seen a couple of profit downgrades come through for Macquarie Group this year. We saw one in February and in April when they uh, talked about their guidance, they did say it was dependent on market conditions. And of course, if you have a look at market conditions, they haven't been that great in terms of volume in the cash equities market, especially in the US where it has gotten a lot of exposure through its aggressive uh, campaign to buy more companies in the US and also through uh, corporate actions. We haven't seen much in terms of that either. So the market market expecting to see a profit downgrade. The big date to be watching is the 28th of July, which is the annual general meeting of Macquarie. So we should get some idea of how its businesses are performing then. Its commodities business is doing well, um, but I guess the concern is around that cash equities market and mm. around the corporate uh, activity that we're seeing as well. And remember, Macquarie Group has undergone a huge transformation. Over the last three years, we've seen return on equity below 10%. So a lot of shareholders questioning where that growth is going to come from. From. They've invested in the U.S. and really we want to see some volumes coming back in the U.S. market.